right, of course, we've got Johnny Bumpus, who is considered one of the great prospects for the 1980 Olympics. Did not get there against Gene Mad Dog Hatcher, who is not a bad prospect at that time himself. Well, what makes this fight interesting is the matchup and style. It's Bumpus, a tall, lanky southpaw, excellent boxer, good hand and foot speed, and Gene Hatcher, a walk-in fighter who likes to be aggressive. So it should be a good matchup. We'll find out more about that. Al will be talking with both of them in a short time. Right now, these messages of interest to you. The worst thing a Balter can do is lose his nerve. When Johnny Bumpus won his WBA Junior Welterweight title from Lorenzo Garcia, it might not have been his best effort. And during the fight, his trainer, Georgie Benton, told him, you'll win this time, you'll look good the next time out. Well, the next time is here in his first title defense against Gene Hatcher. And he is down here in Pasadena, Texas, near Houston, preparing for that battle. Virtually unknown Garcia surprised Bumpus and the boxing world by flooring Johnny in the fourth round. Bumpus got up and controlled the fight to win a unanimous 15-round decision, but it was not a vintage Bumpus performance. Johnny's normally brilliant hand speed and punching accuracy were less than awesome. He'll have to do better against the rugged Hatcher. This fight against Gene Hatcher is one that I think I'll be superb in because he's made the order for me. He comes right in. Uh, he, his defense is not the greatest. Uh, I'm not taking him lightly. I know he's a strong, strong, durable fighter, but I do believe that I can take him out. A champion is an amateur and now a pro. Bumpus still feels he has to beat Hatcher decisively to earn respect as one of boxing's best. I am the world champion. That will always be in the record books. And what the people say is another thing. But as far as my wanting their recognition and acceptance as a champion, I do want that. And I plan to prove myself worthy of a champion so I can get respect. Here at David Gorman's gym in Fort Worth, Texas, they have already produced one champion. That would be WBA welterweight King Donald Curry. Gene Hatcher would like to be the second by beating Johnny Bumpus. And strangely enough, it was his worst break in boxing that led him to this title opportunity. Hatcher missed out on a nationally televised fight with Howard Davis Jr. when in the last minute of the final sparring session, he suffered a cut over his left eye. The eye is healed now, and ironically, that cancellation created tonight's title shot. It seems like for the last two years I've been coming up with big fights and, and it seems like something, you know, it would always happen right right before the, the fight or something. And we just thought, are we supposed to be in this game, you know? And then, you know, the, the, cl the clouds lifted in the sunshine where you're sitting here for a title shot. So the way I look at Johnny Bumpus is he's a, a good, durable champion, but I think that he's taken too big a step by making me his first challenge. For Gene Hatcher, the road to a title shot has not been easy, but he believes his non-stop attack will make the trip pay off tonight with an upset win over Johnny Bumpus. Now the noise seems deafening here in Buffalo. Neither fighter from Buffalo. What do you make of this first one? Well, they both have something to prove. Bumpus would like to atone for the bad performance against Lorenzo Garcia, even though he won. Gene Hatcher in his first title shot wants to make it a good one. And we should have exactly that. I want to tell you now, Cat Sports Night of Champions will continue after this message from your local stations. To Mike Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the city of Buffalo, New York, is talking proud because tonight from the War Memorial Auditorium here in Buffalo, the whole world is going to see championship boxing. And now, man your battle stations, we are going to war. 15 rounds for the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. The referee for this contest is Johnny Lobianco. And now introducing first, in the blue corner, weighing 139 and one half pounds, his record an outstanding one. 21 victories, only two losses, 17 by knockout. From Fort Worth, Texas, the challenger, Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. undefeated in 22 consecutive bouts. Ladies and gentlemen, from 
from Passaic, New Jersey, the WBA Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Johnny Bunce. I had been told that Hatcher was practically adopted by the city of Buffalo, but I thought Bumpus got equally as rousing a cheer when he was introduced. You see Bumpus with his back to you, and the gray, silver-haired man, really, Lou Duva. That's Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. Now this is the chance of a lifetime for the kid. It is indeed. He suffered some disappointments, lost the big fight with Howard Davis because of a cut eye. It turned into this, which was fortuitous for him, a title shot. Lou Duva, big night for Lou. He has a defending champion, and he has a man challenging for the championship. This defending champion, Johnny Bumpus, originally from Tacoma, Washington, and the instructions by Johnny Lobianco. Let's listen. Shake hands now. Come out at the bell. When I tell you to come out of the corner. Good luck to both of you. Bumpus 23, Hatcher 24, you can read the rest. Bumpus, six feet tall, has a four inch height advantage, but only a four inch advantage in reach. And he'll have to use that reach advantage against Hatcher because Gene will try and work inside on him. Bumpus with that educated right hand, he is considered one of the master mechanics in boxing. He can box beautifully. The biggest question is, can he withstand the pressure of Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. We, we mentioned the 18-foot ring at the outset as it relates to Mancini, but it is going to have even a bigger impact in this fight. Hatcher is delighted, I think, that this ring is 18 feet. That's relatively small, and he thinks that will cut down on the foot speed and mobility of Bumpus. Notice that Hatcher, now has come out immediately going for the body. A tentative jab, but the hook to the body, the right to the body, apparently he figures the wasp's waist of Bumpus is vulnerable. Gene Hatcher will go to the body mostly over the first seven rounds. That's his battle plan. He thinks he can hurt Bumpus there early and then get him in the later rounds when he goes to the head. How why does Bumpus go to the right-hand stance when he's a natural lefty? Well, he does switch from time to time in fights. And in training, when we were in Houston, we saw him doing that often, Bill. He may see something in Hatcher's style that he feels like he's quite. Very thin, spindly-legged, but don't get fooled by that. As he goes to the left-hand style, there's a fighter named Joe Sandy Sadler, who also had spindly legs, but was tough. Hatcher, combative, likes to walk in, taking his time, though. This one has 15 rounds to go. We are in the first round. Delighted to bring you this night of champions, Cat Sports, with a minute and a half in the first round. He hit him on the hip with that one. In this first round, Johnny Bumpus has given us much less foot movement than we expected. That may change, but he is standing in with Hatcher, a little bit of a surprise. Gene is, by the way, a notoriously slow starter. So this is a better first round, probably, than he imagined he would have against Bumpus. He is getting to the body, and that one stunned Johnny Bumpus. It looked like it hurt him a little bit. Really did. A right hand, and it did. He's, that's his plan, obviously, to go to the body. He's a very good body puncher, and he feels that's his meal ticket in this fight. And so far in the first round, it's proving out for him. Bumpus, who works from lefty and righty both, has a quick head, keeps his hands low, obviously thinking his head is fast enough to avoid punches. He didn't do there. Gene Hatcher must move his head well coming in, and so far in this first round, he's doing it and slipping the jab of Bumpus. Took a good left cross, though, did Hatcher from Bumpus. Good puncher, Bumpus, Al. Uh, a fairly good puncher, not a devastating one-punch knockout artist, though. may have lost sound, folks, but uh, I can hear myself, so I assume you're there, too. Okay, Hatcher trying to get Bumpus against the ropes. Oh, look at the good right lead. And there's the bell to end round number one. Is that Hatcher has a sneak right hand and can hurt him with it. That is usually described as the way to fight a lefty is hit him with a right hand, but a lot of guys use a left hook to do it, Al. I think Hatcher would rather step outside the right foot of Bumpus and whack away with the left hook to the body and the head, but the right was open for him, so he used it there. 
a bit, I think that was not a good first round for Johnny Bumpus for a variety of reasons. Well, a slip by Hatcher. Not just because Hatcher won the round. Counted it a knockdown. No, that can't possibly be. That's a knockdown? He counted it as a knockdown, which is a surprise even to Lou Duva, who's got Bumpus, who's got a big grin on his face. It looked more like a slip. Hatcher. But John Olobianco said it was a knockdown, That's Al. nothing short of astonishing to me. Hatcher didn't uh, argue that much, and I'm, I'm surprised. Hey. Bumpus trying to control him on the inside, which is surprising. You would expect Bumpus to work at long range with that right hook. And he is very good and very smart as less than two minutes remain in round number two of the scheduled 15-rounder for the Junior Welterweight Championship of the World WBA style. Again, Bumpus switches left to right to confuse Hatcher. Now he's back to the lefty style. Johnny Bumpus is landing his jab much better in this round, and he is keeping it normally. Bumpus, who is trained by one of the best men in the business, Georgie Fenton, knows that his last fight was hardly convincing. But he said, this is the one he's going to look great in, and we shall see. Hatcher, he says, is made for him because Hatcher keeps coming in. But the Mad Dog has a good chin, maybe a little bit of the quality of cutting, but he is very active out. There's the bell. A minute early. That was a two-minute round. We are in our commercial. We got the lump. He's out the the lump. second round was a two-minute round, and then they cut down the one-minute rest period. Johnny Lobianco worked it. Let's get back to our fight, and we shall see. Hatcher being warned about low blows. Moving it on Bumpus. You know, you can kid around a little bit about the strange things that happen in fights, but these rounds being uh, shorter than they should be is really wreaking havoc with the tempo of the fighters and the way this fight could go. So uh, unless they get their act straightened out here, uh, these New York officials are going to uh, add to problems for both fighters. To the point, Al. Exactly. Bumpus, the lefty. Hatcher, the right-handed fighter in the black trunks with a white stripe. I guess Bumpus' color would be called purple with a gold trim. He's the lefty, the defending world champion, WBA junior waterway champion of the world. Bill, you know, what Hatcher is doing effectively much earlier in the fight than I think he thought he would is getting inside and being able to work the body of Bumpus. Bumpus is counterpunching fairly well, but I don't think as well as he thought he would against Hatcher. We have less than two minutes remaining around number three. We and I must tell you, exactly spot for me, folks. The time is approximately. Hatcher staying on top of him. Good right. right. Cut down. That was a good right by Hatcher, and he followed with the left hook to the body. So he is getting downstairs with Bumpus counterpunching off the ropes, but that's not where Johnny Bumpus wants to be. He wants to be in the center of the ring, flying around counterpunching. If he stays inside with Hatcher like this, it could be big problems for him. Good short left hook, and he pushed Hatcher off. Bumpus, I think, would be a more natural welterweight, but the question is, tonight he's in at 140 pounds, and it may be tough for him, a tall, skinny junior welterweight. You know, on the inside, Bumpus in this round is punching pretty well, so that's where we expect Hatcher to do well, but the reality is that in this round, Bumpus is scoring well on the inside. He sure is. Bumpus doesn't seem reluctant to let him corner him. Now, you want to remember Bumpus is an amateur. was good enough to beat the likes of Ray Mancini and a lot of others, and many people thought he was another Ray Leonard in the making. But in his Lorenzo Garcia win, as we have a half minute in round number three, he was not impressive. He is looking to prove to the world that he's a great fighter. Hatcher is a slow starter. Uh, even though he had that good first round, it usually takes him three or four rounds to pick up the pace, and that's what's happening here in, this, in the second and third round. That is the end of round number three. And it isn't just his size and roll. As we go to round number four, our referee, Johnny Lobianco, does not have a vote in the scoring of the fight. The judges, Carol Castellano, Harold Letterman, and Louis Rivera do. And Al, as we go along, and the folks can see the pictures of themselves, tell us about WBA scoring. 
WBA scoring is done on a 10-point must system. And uh, there are three judges you mentioned uh, that scored. There's a three-knockdown rule in effect. And there's no saving by the bell except in the last round. So those are key rules for the fans to remember as this fight goes on. Obviously, Bumpus does not have a great deal of respect for Mandog Patrick's punching power because he keeps moving towards his right hand. And he's taken those punches and apparently feels he can do it with ease. Well, what he will find out probably is that Hatcher picks up steam as this fight goes on. This is about the time in the fight, fourth, fifth, sixth round, when Hatcher normally starts to pick up the pace if he'll do it. Bumpus using his jab very well. There's that right jab again. He is picking off Hatcher pretty well as he's coming in. Gene not giving him as much head movement as he'd like. Yeah, he has him impaled on that right jab. But there's where Hatcher wants to be. They're just above us right now, and Bumpus not worried at all at any stage of this fight about being held against the ropes he apparently thinks he is stronger than Hatcher Hatcher is not working enough when he gets him against the ropes Joe. you know Hatcher had a great sparring partner for this fight uh, Robin Blake his stablemate a very fine uh, lightweight who is a left-hander just like Bumpus has been sparring with him so he's gotten a, a good sparring session for this fight but right now Johnny Bumpus is punching accurately took a left hook to the chin from Hatcher but it didn't shake him at all he has not had any problems with punches but the accumulation could prove disaster if he keeps being as lax as he is. As I said to you before, he obviously does not have a great deal of respect for Hatcher's punching power. He's not trying to keep him in the middle of the ring, not trying to use the long reach advantage, and thinks he can outpunch Hatcher as he's doing right now. The interesting thing is he is fighting Gene Hatcher's fight right now, and he's getting away with it. Whether he will continue remains to be seen, but Johnny Bumpus looking much sharper early than he did in his uh, title win over Lorenzo Garcia. As you can see in your lower right-hand corner, 45 seconds remaining in round number four. How do you have it scored so far, Al? I've got uh, Johnny Bumpus uh, two rounds to one. 28 points to 27. All right, let's get out. Let's get out. We'll fight. Remember, no man can receive less than seven points in a round, no matter what happens. He could be knocked down eight times. Well, he could, because we have the you know, three knockdown rule. But if he goes down twice, he still must get seven points. But Bumpus is, you know, he's watching the crowd. Well, he is. Everybody he's, out there. He's relaxed. Let me amend that scoring. 39-38 would be the correct. And my arithmetic wasn't quite right. In any case, Bumpus ahead by one round. Bumpus with beautiful footwork, working to either side. We are coming down to the end of round number four. Bartender's next big league pitcher. And loves to serve fire brood strows. See what I mean? Father Ron. And also Joe Morente. They tell me that's the first great friend. He's got a good team that's Dave Gorman on the right. He's a manager also talking to him. And I think what they want you to do is get inside and work more against Bumpus when he's there. Got to go take him, babe. This crew not only has Robin Blake as a stable mate. That's nice. He gets slapped into awakening. But also, one of the great fighters today, Donald Curry, is a stable mate. We are in round number five, and the fight has moved very swiftly. The action has not been great because, strangely enough, Bumpus showing very little respect for Hatchery's punching power. Gene does not look like he's in the flow of this fight. And I've seen him this way once before. That was against Alfredo Escalera in Madison Square Garden when he lost to Escalera June 16th, 1983. Uh, some people think that Hatcher got gardenitis, a little bit tense from that fight. And they were worried that he might freeze up a little bit here tonight. And there's some evidence that he might be doing that. We'll see as this fight goes on. Excellent point. He looks just that. Very tough. He throws the right hand one time and catches Bump his right. And it could be curtains for Bumpus. But Bumpus is loose and relaxed and doing everything he wants to do. Playing with that right jab, using the right cross, and saving, cocking that left hand for whatever purpose he needs it at the time. Hatcher is not cutting off the ring well. And there, when he has a Bumpus against ropes, he's not working hard enough. Those are just pity pat punches, not the kind of body punches we've seen from Hatcher in the past. Bump is playing with him right now. You've heard the expression that I've used, cutting off the ropes. Just remember, if a fighter moves counterclockwise, you cut him off by moving clockwise. If he moves clockwise, you cut him off the other way. 
on the inside there, when Hatcher had Bumpus on the ropes, he is just throwing uh, very weak punches. And Hatcher, as I said in the past, I have seen him throw tremendous body shots, great left hook to the body and right hands, not doing that tonight. And that is what's giving Johnny Bumpus, as you said, the courage to mix it up on the inside with him. Lower right-hand corner, you can see. A minute 17 remains in round number five, and Bumpus loaded up a little bit more with a right hand the hook to the head and the hook to the body. But the most impressive part about him is the way he can move and slip punches. Head, body, he doesn't even seem to pick the punches off. He goes left to right so that he gets Hatcher a little confused about how to cut him off. He looked at tapes of a fight between Tony Hatcher and uh, Tyrone Crawley, in which Crawley outboxed Hatcher, and he saw what he liked what he saw, but right now there's Hatcher on the inside working with him. Good right hand by Hatcher. Bumpus still has no respect for him, and he may find out that it's not Rodney Dangerfield that he's fighting. Hatcher did get to him, stunned him with the right hand, and he wants Johnny Bumpus right now. Obiego can't keep apart. Hatcher wants to rumble with him. Less than 20 seconds remaining in round number five. Junior welterweight championship of the world, Johnny Bumpus, the defending champion, and Gene Hatcher. Keeping on top of him in the corner. And that's the end of round number five. Seguin, Texas, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Seguin means barbecue at its biggest and best. And Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Chase its greatest hair name. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. Few Olympic athletes are past 30, but Al Orta won his first of four gold medals 28 years ago. Today he's 47 and going for his fifth. 7-Eleven is a major sponsor of the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, giving great athletes like Al Orta the freedom to prepare for the most important moment of their lives. So what if I'm twice as old? I just do twice as hard. 7-Eleven. The dream begins with freedom. Orthodox style fighter in the black trunks. I said that uh, Bumpus trunks were purple, but apparently they see them as red in our control point, so I will go with the red. Bumpus Howe wants to take this man out. Well, he may be making a mistake by banging with Hatcher. I have never seen any throw hurt Gene Hatcher badly. Uh, he's been able to fairly good punches. Uh, Ed, Edward Lugo, who is a fine fighter, a uh, good puncher in any case, couldn't hurt Hatcher. That was a good right by Hatcher. Oh, he hurt him with a left hand. He hurt Bumpus with a left hook. When Lorenzo Garcia put Bumpus down early in their fight, it caused many people to question whether Bumpus could take a punch. Hatcher's not a tremendous puncher, but he's got some power. The thing that impresses me about Hatcher mostly, Al, is that he is a short puncher with either hand, both the hook and the right hand, doesn't waste a tremendous amount of space to deliver them, and Bumpus, who should be able to keep him off with that jab that he's using right now, decided he wants to impress America for the fact that he is a rough, tough guy. Well, he's backing himself into the ropes. He's about to do it again, I think. There's left hand. He gets away from it from Hatcher. That's a big mistake Johnny's uh, making. Oh, no, Johnny! No, Johnny! Johnny Lobianco, the third man of the ring, has kept him moving all along. Bumpus, who relies on the speed of his head to move away from punches rather than picking them off with his hands, has been caught a few times in this round, but has taken the punch as well. He obviously does not have a great deal of respect for Hatcher's punching power. Gene Hatcher's forgetting the body, Bill. That was his plan. But once he started to hit Bumpus in the head, I think he got enamored with that, and now he is going almost exclusively for Bumpus's head, not his game plan. It's so easy for fighters to become headhunters. That's the natural tendency, and he's doing it. Less than a minute remains in round number six. And it's more of a problem for him because his, uh, his really best work goes to the body, and Bumpus switches righty. Let's see if he does uh, well for that possible. 
Well, he's able to pick off the left hook easier with the right hand than he is the other way. But uh, he's an equally fine-looking fighter either way. The question is that when you look this good, why do you have to show macho? Well, in, in the last portion of this round, he has kept the fight in the center of the ring and boxed Hatcher rather effectively, but early Hatcher was able to get them. Gene Hatcher is looking to load up with one punch. That's not his style, and it is hurting him in this fight. 15 seconds remaining in round number six of what has been a very entertaining fight on Cat Sports Night of Champions. And we, the Cat Sports Night of Champions, will continue after this message from your local station. Take the car. Uh, uh, no, thank you, Mr. McIntyre. We'll take the bus. Right. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Gotta get, get Mako. From rust, dents, and crashes to a great paint job, Mako brings your car back to life, all for a price lower than you'd expect. And accident claims, it's all part of the job at Mako. So when you have an uh-oh, better get, get Mako. We go to round number six, round number seven, forgive me, and Hatcher has a slight nick at the corner of his right eye, the outside corner of the right eye. And of course, that's something they're very concerned about. Gina, as I mentioned, suffered a cut that uh, caused the, his fight with Howard Davis to be canceled. It, it, it inevitably got him this fight, but uh, that cut could be a problem over the right eye. You know, there haven't been a great many left-handed champions of the world, but this division, the junior white uh, welterweight division, has had quite a few. Indeed, and Bumpus is, is anxious to tell people with this performance tonight that he's one of the better ones. Uh, again, we said that his fight against Garcia was a fight that he wasn't that proud of, and he's very anxious to atone for that tonight. If you were wondering who the two lefties were, Sandro Lopofalo and Bruno Arcari. Only you would I'm know great. that. Though. <laughs> the amazing major knows that. <laughs> two minutes remaining in round number seven. I failed the quiz tonight. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, you know, you have to put that in. Uh, it's a matter of <laughs> Bump is using more foot speed now, Bill. He's trying to... Uh, Keep Hatcher in the center of the ring, hit him from different angles, and give him that good lateral movement that he's known for. Hatcher, by the way, in the 19 Olympic, the 1980 Olympic trials, was beaten by Davy Moore, who in turn was beaten by Don Curry. Hatcher was the bronze medalist, Moore the silver medalist, and Curry the gold medalist. And I think at this point, Hatcher wishes he could punch like Donald Curry. But he's been a busy fighter. He's had a hard time keeping Bumpus on the ropes in the last couple of rounds. And Gene Hatcher is just not very busy at this point in this fight, though. He is not throwing as many punches as he'd like, and Bumpus keeping him on the outside. And I don't think that Johnny Bumpus is fighting extraordinarily well in this fight at this point, but Hatcher has allowed him to get away with it. Can he go 15 rounds under this kind of pressure? I'm telling you about Bumpus. Well, Hatcher isn't putting all that much on. Uh, early he was. Unless Hatcher can get inside and work the body, Bumpus may well be able to do it at this pace. Less than 45 seconds remaining in round number seven of a scheduled 15 rounder from Buffalo's War Memorial Auditorium, Cat Sports Night of Champions. Still to come, Ray Mancini against Livingston Bramble. But this one, a live fight, folks. And what a marvelous return to what I told Al was the fight night in America year after year. Bumpus doing a little bit of antics now. Friday night, traditionally fight night. Ten seconds remaining in the seventh round. Easy working round for Bumpus as Hatcher seems to just be taking his time. Bumpus pulling the old kid Gavilon trick. We'll be back. Oh, my oh! As we look into Johnny Bumpus' corner, I think that he's got to be pleased with the work that he's done. Lou Duva leaning in to talk to him as well as Georgie Benton. He's been able to keep 
catcher at the end of his jab, basically, and doing much better than that last fight you see against Lorenzo Garcia. He won that fight and won the title, but again, artistically, he wasn't pleased with it. Dan Duva and George Benton are the men responsible in the corner for his strategy as we go to round number eight. Bumpus now has decided to box him right-handed. I guess he figures that way he'll confuse Hatcher and maybe be able to use what was a left cross as a left hook, but now he goes back to being a lefty again, and that right hand has been his best punch in the fight. Hatcher landed a good overhand right there, and it landed on the chin of Bumpus, didn't do too much damage. Gene's best weapon is the left hook, so if he concentrates on that right, I think he's helping Johnny Bumpus out. Hatcher needs to work his jab a little more, Bill. He's not a great jabber, but it, he needs it to work his way in so he can work through the body. You're absolutely right. Or else he's got to walk through Bumpus's jab and just get on top of him. Bumpus, though, has been quick enough in this fight so far to not be cornered, at least in the last couple of rounds. In the first round, of course, what Bumpus did was say, hey, you want a slug? I'm here. But what Hatcher didn't do in those early rounds was work effectively to the body. Gene has thrown so many fewer punches, and I've seen him throw in most of his fights, and I've worked uh, maybe 80% of his fights, and normally he is just a whirlwind, constantly throwing punches. Worried about going 15? I don't think so. I think it's more a question he's just very tentative in there. Maybe Bumpus hurt him early in this fight. That's what some people wondered about. Could Bumpus stun Hatcher at all? Perhaps he made him respect his power. Or does he think maybe he can take Bumpus out with one punch and is loading up? I think that's what he's lulled himself into thinking. It's possible it could happen, but uh, you could lose a fight waiting to do that. Minute 25 remains in round number eight. Johnny Bumpus in the red trunks. Mad Dog Hatcher. Fort Worth in the black trunk. Hatcher should be bobbing and weaving and throwing that left hook to the body. He's just not doing it, and he's capable of it. Bumpus's hand speed has been an important uh, story in this fight. He has uh, used that hand speed to keep Hatcher off and is negating Hatcher trying to get in there. What's interesting to me, Kyle, is the fact that Bumpus almost invited him this last time to come on the ropes and fight with him, and Hatcher didn't do it. Bumpus looks in marvelous shape. There's been talk that getting down to this weight is very difficult for him. He's so tall that he would be a much more natural welterweight than a junior welterweight. But so far tonight, he has not had problems. I mean, in every fight, they're going to get hit a bomb once in a while, but they don't seem to have affected him. And he's moving now much more than he did in the first couple of rounds. And because of that, he's able to hit Asher from different angles and stay away from those body shots. down to the end of round number eight. We'll be back. UBA Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. How do you have it so far, Al? I've got the fight 89-84 uh, for Johnny Bumpus. I think he's built up a pretty large margin with uh, the boxing and that right jab that you see right there. He did some marvelous maneuvering to get off the ropes, but he got hit with one punch. He's a very, very skillful defensive mechanic, but even the best of them, the Holly Mims, the George Bentons, if they get hit to the body, are going to be hurt. And that time, Hatcher hit him hard enough so that we got the spray right here. Gene Hatcher is starting to work when he gets Bumpus again through ropes, even though Johnny did a wonderful job of getting off those ropes earlier. Hatcher's just got to throw a lot of punches when he gets inside against Bumpus. Hasn't been doing that. Now there, that's where Hatcher's got to work. Bumpus ties him up very well, and Mokyanko comes in. The defending WBA junior welterweight champion is Johnny Bumpus. He's the man in the red trunks. Mad Dog Hatcher with a mustache, crowding him now. See if he can corner him. Bumpus threw a couple of good left hooks a moment ago to the body, but there's that Bumpus jab. It's not always landing, but he's keeping Hatcher at bay and uh, uh, preventing it from getting into his rhythm. This is what Hatcher needs to do. He gets inside, banging the body over the long haul. He thinks that'll have an impact over 15 rounds. He's gone back to what he did in the early round. Exactly. And it's been effective uh, for most of this round. He used a pretty good jab that time to the And that's when he needs to work his way in. And there he used the left hook, but Bumpus, the hand speed. Bumpus looks like he might have hurt him with a one left hook. So 
hard to differentiate with Bumpus because he changed his style, whether he's hooking or crossing, but either way, they hurt. And you were, I think you made a telling point. He may have scored on Hatcher early and gained a lot of respect. It's conceivable. It's certainly Gene is a little more tentative than uh, you would expect him to be in coming in. Gene has made it. One of the errors Gene has made in this fight is he's not giving enough head movement as he's coming into Hatcher, and he's getting hit with more punches because of it. Now, here's where Gene has to go to work. Floating up too much. That's right. He should be throwing a combination, which he's capable of doing. They're both above us right now. You can listen to this gratuitous advice. <laughs> right here. I think they get better advice from their corners, so. though. Less than 25 seconds remaining. Round number nine. Scheduled 15-rounder, Johnny Bumpus and Gene Mad Dog Hatcher. They're just above us right now. Bumpus no, spinning him towards the middle. Cat Sports Night of Champions will continue after this message from your local station. Now, any 35 Green millimeter. Numbers. There's just one name for a pizza like that. Pizza Hut Super Supreme Pan Pizza. Nine most delicious toppings on America's most popular dinner mm. pizza. Super. Super Supreme. At your hometown Pizza Hut. I want to remind you again, the man in the middle, Johnny Lobianco, does not have a vote in this fight. Carol Castellani, Louis Rivera, and Harold Letterman are the only ones who contribute votes in the fight. The three judges, that's a WBA ruling. He's still sticking him with that left hand. In the 10th round, Mad Dog Hatcher, a little bit behind by Al Bernstein's scorecard, has got to start crowding the man and making his bid for a championship. You don't get too many of these in a lifetime. Indeed, in the, in the last round, I thought Hatcher did start to come on a bit. That was maybe his best round in the last four or five. And uh, he was able to work the body a little with Hatcher, but he did take a lot of those counter punches from Bumpus. Uh, Hatcher now trying to walk through that right jab, just just literally walk through it and score telling blows. But those who were saying that Bumpus did not take a great punch may have to change their minds. He's been hit a couple of shots tonight without any great telling effect. Less than two minutes remaining in the 10th round. Gene Hatcher is making one very big tactical error. He is, he is keeping his left foot on the inside of the right foot of Johnny Bumpus. He should be getting on the outside and throwing the left hook to the body and the head of Bumpus. See, his left foot is on the inside of Bumpus's. He's trying to get it on the outside, but it's not getting there. And Bumpus is able to elude those punches. Good foot speed by Bumpus. You know, strange. He's very gangly looking, and because of that, you don't get an impression of speed, but he's up on his toes, and he can move, and he's smart. Smart, good left jab, good right cross, and probably on his way to the welterweight division very shortly. And that will be where we will get a better test, I think, of his ability to take a punch from the bigger man. Gene Hatcher reduced now to lunging with those punches. He's not gotten into the rhythm of this fight working like he wants. Never has been able to do that. Bumpus anticipated is coming in with the right and is using that left uppercut. Remember that Bumpus comes from the Tacoma stable that produced Davy Armstrong, Sugar Ray Seals, Leo Randolph, Rocky Lockridge, good fighters. And added to that amateur tutelage that by going down and training under Clint Jackson in Nashville where he worked as a deputy sheriff. So he's got good amateur training. Right now as a pro, he is doing a job on Gene Hatcher. One thing you want to notice about Bumpus, his eyes never close. There are some fighters who close their eyes. His eyes are wide all the time, looking, picking the man off with a jab. And now he goes to the righty style and the lefty style. He just got Hatcher confused, except that Hatcher used a good punch, the left hook to the body. Good right hook by Bumpus, but he took a right. And the crowd comes alive. that penetrate wood and repel water. Extra protection weather screen helps preserve the beauty of the wood. We have the inside on outside protection. Olympic. 
We went away at the bell, but Al, we saw something unusual. Some extracurricular activity after the bell. Watch what happens. Lobianco trying to get in between the fighters at the bell. They kept punching. Johnny Lobianco went down. Bumpus going after Hatcher. A melee. Eventually, the cornerman had to come in to try and stop it. That was Lou Duva stepping in. So frustration, I think, on the part of Gene Hatcher uh, evident there. He may think that's his best approach to Bumpus. To get well, Lobianco between them and start belling him. Used him as a screen. I guess he did. Hatcher comes charging out of his corner at Bumpus, apparently invigorated by the ending of that 10th round. This is round number 11, scheduled for 15, and they told Hatcher that he's behind and he's got to get going. He's staying on top of Bumpus. Who wants to fight him inside? Oh, they are banging away inside, and, uh, and Johnny Bumpus decides he's going to go after Hatcher. An interesting, though maybe not prudent, strategy at this point. Hatcher is thumbing him with his gloves. There obviously is no love love. You know, it's interesting. These two fighters actually are, are very gentlemanly outside the ring. They have been cordial to each other leading up to this fight, unlike Grandpa and Mancini, who we'll see later. But yet, uh, feelings have erupted here in this round, and Bumpus out working on the inside against, or had to work against Bumpus on the inside. Bumpus could be making a big mistake rumbling on the inside with Hatcher here in the 11th. We'll see. Here's Sixer right now. Bumpus has gone back to doing what he did in the early rounds when he virtually said to Hatcher, you cannot hurt me. I'll fight you any way you want to. Hatcher has what he wants right now, but uh, he didn't make the most of it. He landed some good shots, but so did Bumpus. Good left hook. That hurt Johnny Bumpus. That hurt him. Got him in trouble. He's Has in some trouble. trouble. Yep. Left hook hurt him. to follow up, Bill. That's the question. Does he know how hurt Bumpus was by that? Looking at Bumpus closely as we are, he took another right, and Hatcher's on top of him. Here is where Gene Hatcher should go downstairs also, Bill. It would set up the shot to the head. He didn't hear you. He's teeing off with the right hand, and Bumpus is going back at him. He just stopped punching there for a moment. Bumpus took advantage, so Johnny may have cleared his head. Some trouble here in round 11 for Johnny Bumpus, but he is... Oh, oh he's down! Bumpus went down! He may not be able to get up. His legs are twitching. He is in desperate trouble. Gene Hatcher celebrating. Hatcher right is celebrating, and he came out of the neutral corner. Bumpus is on Queer Street. He's in he trouble. may be done. He's down again, remember, and he goes down. It was not counted a knockdown, and the referee, Lobianco, pushed him so hard, Bumpus almost went out. Hey, Lou Duva in the corner yelling at Bumpus. Lobianco has lost control of this fight. He never made a call on that. Bumpus in all kinds of trouble, trying to hold on. But is Lobianco stopping it? Lobianco has stopped it. He has stopped it. We have a new junior welterweight champion. But Bumpus is hurt. There's no question about officials or Gene Hatcher. Lou Duva, I don't know whether you can see him, no you can't. Lou Duva is at Johnny Lobianco's side. You're looking at Ron Hatcher, the father of Gene Hatcher, and one shot, one loaded shot, took Bumpus out. An absolutely stunning ending. Duva now has to be restrained by his son Dan. He is angry. You can see the scene. Therese said that. There's no question Bumpus was hurt. He went to the canvas several times. The first one certainly a knockout, but the second perhaps questionable. And you go on up to the ring, and we'll take it. It is a wild scene as Gene Hatcher's wife and son are in the ring with him. Gene Hatcher has become the new WBA junior welterweight champion of the world. And momentarily, Al Bernstein will be in the ring with the winner. Johnny Bumpus, Gamble, decided he was going to match punch for punch with Hatcher, and in the end, it cost him. So now, here we go. We've seen the kiss of the wife. Now let's see what did it to Bumpus. Hatcher using the bob and weave style left hook. Left hook squarely on the jaw, and Bumpus went down. 
Everybody says you got to hit a southpaw with a right. There's the left hook. Bumpus had dropped his right hand, vulnerable, and his legs just went out. And as I saw him lying on the canvas, it was obvious he had no control of his legs. There are the Hatchers, happy. Mad Dog is a world champion. TKO in the 11th round, and shortly Al Bernstein should be with the new world champion. So much of a melee above us that I cannot even see Al. There he is. There he is. Can you get him? Do you want the announcement? Fine and dandy. Let's first have the announcement of the decision. 35 seconds of the 11th round. The winner by technical knockout is the referee. Johnny Lobianco stops this bout. And a new junior quarterweight champion of the World Boxing Association, Team Mad Dog. All right, Mad Dog Hatcher is now with Al Bernstein. Al, can you hear me? It's all yours. Okay, we are here with Gene Hatcher in what can only be described as a chaotic situation in the street. First of all, Gene, did you think Bumpus was hurt sufficiently enough to stop the fight, even though, of course, it's not your decision? Yes, sir. I thought he was terribly hurt, and he was hanging on every chance he got. And when your fighter's hanging on like that, that means he's hurt, and he just didn't want to let go and fall, because he knew if he let go, he'd fall. And when you're... When you're hurt that bad to fall, you're hurt bad enough to stop the fight. Now, you landed a good left hook. I thought you were trying to load up on your punches, and you weren't working on the inside. Did you feel some desperation at that point? In the early rounds, in the, until right in the tenth, I finally decided that I was going to start boxing this guy. I quit trying to one-shot him, because the first round, I caught him with that good right hand, and that set me off wrong. I was trying to knock him out too early. All right, let's take a look at that, Gene, and let's see how you got the knockout and uh, the left hook and the right that you hit him with. So let's take a look at it right now, and you Al, comment. Al, I'd like to thank the Heavenly Father for this, oh, for this, beautiful. And for that extreme hard left hook. He gave me the ability and the stamina to, to do this fight the way I just wanted to. Right, as we look at it from another angle, you were trying to get this left hook in all night. Yeah. Yes, that's what I've been working on in the gym with Robin Blake. Thanks to Robin Blake working with me the last five and a half weeks. I have perfected the left hook and, and my right hand. Thank God for Robin Blake for working for me the last five weeks. I have to ask Dave Gorman, your manager, surely there will be much controversy about this win. Do you think it will take the win at all? I don't care how much controversy there is. We got us a champion and Gene knocked hell out of him with that hook. He had him hurt. The guy didn't, couldn't even get on his feet. What, what else are they going to do? Let him fight crawling around on his knees? Okay, Ron Hatcher, your father, this has got to be a proud moment for you, Ron. Yes. Just that, this is Johnny Bumpus coming in, congratulating Gene Hatcher. A show of class and sportsmanship by Johnny. A tough loss, certainly, for him and uh, both these fighters. And while we have Johnny Bumpus here, if you don't mind, John, we'd like to get a comment or two from you. Obviously, that left hook had your hurt. I guess you were very upset that the fight was stopped. I've got to ask you, uh, did that left hook hurt you sufficiently? Oh, yes, I was hurt. But it was nothing that I couldn't uh, come back from. You felt you could have held on and weathered the rest of the round. He threw me down. I was trying to grab him, and he threw me down. You were a w when, Can I see that again? Well, we may get a chance to look at the end of the fight. We, had sh we showed the uh, portion where you were knocked down with the left hook, and you wobbled to the canvas. We are trying to get that up. I thought that he was not getting to you early in the fight. He was a little bit desperate, but he did get that left hand. Yeah, he caught me with a left hook. I was hurt. But were, it was were you doing what you wanted to do in this fight? Oh, yes. I was boxing him, doing all the things I wanted to. He caught me with a left hook, right. All right, let's but take a look. That I couldn't, you know, come back from. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look, let's take a look now at when the fight was stopped. Lou Duba is here. He's very upset. Here it is. Now, let's grab him. He pushed me down. See, he's pushing me. All right, now we're looking at the action, and you said you believe that was a push. That's right. I was grabbing on, and he went like that. Okay, look, how much trouble do you feel you were in at that point? You felt you could have continued. Oh, yes, without a doubt. You saw I got up and tried to, tried to get back to fighting. I wasn't hurt that bad. Okay, so you did feel that you could have continued. I guess we have to get Lou Duva. Lou, I know this is a difficult moment for you. Turn there, and I know that you're upset about this decision. What do you feel motivated the referee to stop this fight? Because because Johnny was floundering, and he was floundering, but he wasn't hurt, understand? What the guy was doing was wrestling him, roughing him down. He wrestles uh, Johnny down. He hits him when he's down. Lobianco don't do a damn thing about it. He makes him get up, understand? And then he stops the fight in the clinch. 
Now, God's done it. That's not fair. It's not fair. All right, obviously you're upset about this. Did you feel absolutely. that Johnny uh, was winning the fight oh, at that absolutely. point? Absolutely. He was walking away with the fight. It was no contest, for Christ's sake. It was no contest. He got a little careless. He dropped his hands. He started to punch him. Look, we know the guy's a good puncher. We know he's a strong fighter. We want the Johnny to box him. That's all. But he wasn't hurt. He was not hurt. I'm telling you, he wasn't hurt. He should have. He should have. He should have disqualified him or give Johnny a rest when he hit him when he was down. Okay, Lou Duva and Johnny Bumpus obviously very upset about this win for Gene Hatcher, but Gene Hatcher is the new junior welterweight champion. Let's go back to Bill Major at ringside. You know, uh, one thought comes across to me through all of this scene. Duva has yet to bring Livingston Bramble into the ring as you look at Johnny Bumpus. Now, the one thing that Bumpus did not talk about, and I don't know whether we still have the shot, when he went down, he went down just above us, and his legs started to quiver. I didn't even think that he was going to beat the count. He did beat the count. He may say that he wasn't that badly hurt. He may say that he was floundering a little bit, but I will tell you one thing. That was a badly hurt fighter. The judgment of Johnny Lobianco will stand on this.